And the researchers found that if I have a friend who's obese, my probability increases by 45%. My friends who don't even know them have a 20% increased chance, and their friends have a 5% increased chance. And this is true for happiness, marriage and divorce rates, smoking habits, voting habits, literally everything spreads through our relationships. Welcome to the Spartan Up Podcast with Joe DeSena, founder and CEO of Spartan Race. We are talking about overcoming obstacles. The same way we teach people to get over obstacles on the course, we will teach you here on the Spartan Up Podcast to get over obstacles in your mind. What are the greatest predictors of health, performance, and longevity? Relationships. Today, behavioral scientist John Levy explains why these connections are so important and how you can have more of them. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by AmazeFit. From May 18th to May 31st, Spartan Up listeners can head to us.amazefit.com slash pages slash Spartan to save $40 on a bundle that includes the AmazeFit T-Rex Pro. That's us.amazefit.com slash pages slash Spartan. Joe Senna here, Spartan CEO and founder for the Spartan Up podcast. I got John Levy. John, what do you got in your hand? What is that thing I'm looking at? Th- this thing? This yeah. is a glowing red mic. A glowing red mic. I like that. I don't have one. It's, uh, it's because all the best tech for streaming is designed for 13-year-old boys who play video games. Like so it that. all glows. I like that. Hey, let's get into a book. You Apparently, you got a new book coming out? It just came out. It's been going crazy, like absolute insanity. What? Uh, it's called You're Invited, The Art and Science of Cultivating Influence. Uh, and it talks about the insane relationship between uh, success and human connection. You know, uh, do you follow Dale Carnegie at all? I, brilliant guy. I took a Dale Carnegie class. I graduated college and I was just feeling like I needed a class. And, um, you know, you get more bees with honey than you do with vinegar. Is that, yeah. is that kind of the point of your book? Uh, the point of the book is uh, that when I was 28, I had, uh, I was overweight. I was broke. I like things were not looking good for me. And I came across a study about obesity and the researchers found that if I have a friend who's obese, my probability increases by 45%. My friends who don't even know them have a 20% increased chance and their friends have a 5% increased chance. And this is true for happiness, marriage and divorce rates, smoking habits, voting habits, literally everything spreads through our relationships. And I was not like in the place in life where setting an alarm at 5 a.m. would get me to the gym. I was hitting snooze. And so I had to figure out how to connect with people who are really exceptional, exceptional athletes, exceptional business leaders, exceptional thinkers. And so the book is about how do you connect with anybody and actually develop a deep and meaningful relationship. And I break down all the science and stories and explanations on how to do it. So so you explain the why, right? Mm -hmm. The why we need to hang out with incredible people. But what's the how? Oh, so this is kind of what's crazy about it. As I was researching it, it's it breaks down to three parts. The first is who we're connected to, right? Because if we're not connected to somebody, we can't be influenced by them or influence them. The second is how much they trust us. Because if people don't trust us, they're not going to be influenced by us. And the third is our sense of belonging, right? So you look at Spartan, and what's incredible about it is that you didn't just create a, a group of people who are by themselves. You developed a community. And as a byproduct of people being part of a community, the strength and the impact they have on one another is much greater. And so the how, I'll give you an example of trust, okay? Right now, you probably get hit up a lot. Hey, let me take you out to dinner, right? And you're invited to dinner after dinner or like parties with swag bags. And the fact is you don't need any more of this stuff in your life. It turns out it also doesn't build trust effectively. What does is something called the Ikea effect. And it states that we disproportionately care about our Ikea furniture because we had to assemble it. Anything we put effort into, we care about disproportionately. So my objective when I meet somebody who I find really impressive and interesting isn't to win them over, but rather to find ways for them to put effort into our relationship 
It's why when we met, Joe, I asked you to come to my home and cook me dinner. Work. And that, then, was that was smart. I did it. And, and um, when you called with your new book, I immediately answered the phone. Yeah. And, and here's what's interesting. I also did it. And here's this is something uh, I'll point out is that we're always scared to go ask people for favors. And there's a lot of people who think, oh, if I ask somebody for something now, I can't go back. But it turns out that that's not actually how human behavior works. Uh, there's this great study on asking for directions. If I ask you for complex directions, you probably won't give them to me. But if I first ask you for the time and then the directions, then you will. And so if I can get people to put in a little bit of effort, they'll then put in a lot more. So nowadays, when it comes to taking meetings with people, I actually invite them to a boot camp because then we put in effort and we sweat together. And then we have a walk and a conversation and we're bonded. No. And so that takes the relationship to the next level. I didn't even, I didn't know any of the science, but mm -hmm. um, I guess because I grew up in that neighborhood in Queens where we had to figure this out innately, um, everything you're describing, I just do naturally. Like I would do a lot of interviews with people making them carry a rock up the mountain with me. But yeah, but I didn't, I wasn't like I read the science and I said, if I right, like, and, and I never ask for anything of anybody. I always try to do stuff with them first. And I try to ask for little things for it. Right. And you build a relationship before you ask for anything big. So that's interesting that, um, the wise guys in Queens, right. The organized crime guys, they figured this out a long time ago. Like, Hey, let's go kill somebody together first and build a bond. <laughs> But that's, that's what's amazing, is that if we really look, the best techniques are at the people who are on the ground level, bottom line. And then the people who don't get exposure to that, like me, who are geeky and lonely, we try to take what you do and explain it and understand it for the rest of us. I got but you'll always find like the best stuff is ground level, right? Ground level is a great way to describe it. I immediately thought about like the trenches and World War II and the streets in New York or, yeah. or Detroit. Ground level, uh, you figure it out at a young age, right? We're up in these ivory towers, you and I. I'm in the Spartan Tower over here. I'm not on the ground anymore. Yeah, it's interesting. The, there's this idea of some being anti-fragile, right? So I have a glass here. If I drop it, it shatters, it's fragile. Human beings, relationships and ideas are anti-fragile. When we have pressure put on us, we get stronger. I lift weights, I get stronger. And when our relationships have some pressure on them, we actually get stronger. And what everybody wants is to be comfortable, for it to be easy, but that's not being alive or human. We do best when there's something applying pressure to us. John, when we're done with this, you got to send me an email because I'm constantly, you know, my mission is to change 100 million lives. I'm constantly trying to figure out what's going to hook people. And when you just describe the anti-fragile nature of human beings and why it's so important to do hard things, especially together, that's what we do for a living. That's our business. I know. I love your company. Right? When you told me about how you did the race with the, the bull and like all that, I was like, that's incredible because there's an additional factor that you put into place that most people never even consider. And that is that if I keep doing the same things everybody else does, nobody's going to notice me. If I want to connect with extraordinary people, it won't be, hey, Joe, can I take you out for a cup of coffee? You could buy a Starbucks if you wanted to. That's not going to get your attention. But if we do something novel, something that stands out, there's a section of our brain called the SNVTA. It's the major novelty center. And when we trigger it, it causes people to want to explore and understand. The fact that what you're doing is so different, the fact that there was an actual bull, draws me out and says, oh my God, what's going on there? Now, some people might say that's not for me, but they'll definitely notice. They'll notice. And so what are the, let's talk about that. I, I'm selfishly diving in here for, for Spartan's sake. I apologize, but, but look, you wrote the book to help people like me. Yeah. Right. I wrote the book to help everybody. Right. Yeah. And, and here to, for like 
pure selfishness of Spartan, I'm going to share a, a little piece of data. In 2000, uh, sorry, 1985, the average American had three friends besides family. By 2004, just 19 years later, we were down to two. In less than a generation, we lost 50% of our close friends besides family. I'm uh, sorry, 30% as a nation. And the problem with that is that the greatest predictors of human longevity, yes, exercise is one of the top five, but number two is close friends, and number one is social integration, being part of a community. And so what think about I what really- we, Think about what we do at Spartan. We, ch we check every box. You're gonna live yes, longer. Exactly. So here's, here, I'll just give you the, the list of things that cause people to live a long time, okay? We'll be right back to this episode, but first a little bit of information from AmazeFit. AmazeFit is the official partner of Spartan Race US. AmazeFit has launched a new rugged outdoor sports smartwatch, the AmazeFit T-Rex Pro. It's shock resistant and built to be tough from the inside out. The T-Rex Pro is an ideal companion for the Spartan Race. Having passed 15 military grade tests of toughness and boasting 10 ATM water resistance. From May 18th to May 31st, Spartan Up listeners can save $40 on a bundle, which includes the AmazeFit T-Rex Pro. The T-Rex Pro can measure 16 body health metrics with high accuracy. So don't forget, head to us.amazefit.com slash pages slash Spartan. That's us.amazefit.com slash pages slash Spartan. Think about what we do at Spartan. We, ch we check every box. You're going to live yes. longer. Exactly. So here's here. I'll just give you the, the list of things that cause people to live a long time. Okay. So uh, it's some clean air and water. That's important. Like good environment. Next one up is exercise. One after that is quitting drinking, then quitting smoking. That's much more important. Like that's a really big deal. Number two is close social ties. And number one is social integration, being part of a community. And I bet, I bet above number one is crawling under barbed wire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, depending on where you are in the world and what's going on, absolutely. No, but think about uh, it. Think about it. We get people to stop drinking, stop smoking. They start exercising. They go to bed early. They meet yeah. a bunch of friends and they do hard shit together. It's great. It's absolutely incredible. And that's one of the reasons I'm such a fan of what you guys are up to is that everybody wants the latest, like, okay, kale cleanse or something. But the things that really work for human beings are at the core of what it is to be human, which is other people and pushing ourselves. I, and that's the bottom line. I just visualized you and I building a giant laboratory, like in a secret location and Test the limits of human beings. No, and it's like it's like you know how in, in China they said they had the virus lab in Wuhan, right? And yeah. So we have a longevity lab, you and I, and we've been doing work for forty years, and the smartest people in the world there. And the product we produced was a Spartan race. Yeah. <laughs> that was it. It's so simple. That's awesome. It it oddly is, and here's what's interesting: the same stuff that gives us longevity you can track to company performance. So company stock value, employee sick days and profitability, you can track them to the level of trust with, that the employees have. If you look at company success or team success, the greatest factor is something called psychological safety. That even if uh, we disagree, I'm still part of the community and I'm not gonna be kicked out. Well, here's a question for you, John. I'm struggling right now. Mm -hmm. with, as every company is with getting people back in the office. Now, yeah. the crazy thing is our ground troops, our front line, they never left the office. There are any chance we could put on an event anywhere in the world, they're there, right? Mm -hmm. um, the folks that work in the physical office here in Boston, it's been hard, right? The masks, the protocols, the home, the kids, and yeah. try to break this last year of habit of not coming in but what you're saying, I think, I don't want to put words in your mouth, is actually we could build more trust if we saw each other in the office. So there's, I'd say there's like three or four things here that are, I'm, I'll share really quick. 
The first is, I'm not one of those people who's obsessed that it has to be like five day work week. That was completely invented because of a religious calendar, right? Uh, I don't know what the optimal number is, right? But what I can tell you is there's this research called the Allen curve and it works really simply. The closer our desks are, the more our communication increases exponentially. Now, that's really important because once you begin separating people by distance, when you reach about 50 meters, you might as well be on like different planets and out of sight, out of mind, right? If you're never bumping into each other in the hallways or uh, having group events or whatever it is, then there's no sense of culture that really spreads in a meaningful way. It's just really tough. The second is it's really, really hard to build trust at distance. It's possible. You just have to organize the entire organization around it. And here's why. You know how when you, uh, we invest effort, that IKEA effect, we become closer? It's because of something called a vulnerability loop. So if I'm going under barbed wire and my shirt's caught and I'm struggling, in that moment, I have, a, I have an experience of vulnerability, right? I might not be able to get myself out of it alone. Now, if nobody supports me, trust is reduced. But if somebody comes by and gives me a hand and pulls me out, suddenly trust is increased because we've both demonstrated vulnerability. They took a risk. And then trust can have another loop and another loop and we can trust each other more. When we're in an office, that kind of stuff happens naturally. Somebody passes me something, brings me a cup of coffee because I'm tired. At a distance, it's really hard to accomplish. So, so it's good you're saying that I disconnected. I'm not joking. I disconnected the elevator in the door. Oh, really? Yeah. So the only way up and down is the stairs. And uh, we do have, we do have a, um, a, a back elevator in case anybody ever came in, you know, on crutches or a wheelchair, which we have. Yeah. yeah. But anybody disabled. But, but otherwise, they're struggling together going up five floors of stairs. So here's the, the interesting thing. The key in this kind of stuff is to have people experience it at the same time. And uh, researchers found that if we do wall sits together, we may never need to speak to each other, but just going through that experience next to one another will cause us to trust each other more or like each other more. You've given me so much information here. I got to, how, how big is the book? How many pages do I have to read? I think it's like 256 or something like that, somewhere around the pages, but it sounds like exactly what the doctor ordered right now coming out of COVID. Oh yeah. It's fundamentally about the fact that if we want to have deep and meaningful relationships with anybody, regardless of their celebrity or status, this is how we do it. And you know how we met. I am, you were part of a secret dining experience yeah. where 12 people were invited. They can't talk about work or give their last name. And after you cook dinner together, you found out that you were with Nobel laureates, Olympians, editors in chief, celebrities. And so it's built on the same methodology that created this community of over 2000 industry leaders. I love it. I love it. When am I going to see you again? You're going to come up to the farm. Maybe we have, um, on June 25th, if you put it down in your calendar, uh, for about a week, we have a kid's death camp. Oh my um, God. I torture the kids for a week and um, put them through really hard shit together. Uh, climbing mountains, ice cold That's water awesome. in the morning, all stuff that no lawyer um, would ever <laughs> allow. And um, what it does, it builds resilient kids and better relationships this is, now that. This is so interesting. I, when I was growing up, I went to a high school where the head of uh, phys ed, was an Olympic medalist in judo. And the school was famous for having a lot of rich kids that misbehaved. I was not one of those kids. I was by the poorest family in the school. And, uh, and parents would pay $100,000. This is like in the 90s to have their kids shipped off to like Bosnia to live with Olympians and just train all the time. Wow. And the reason was that if we want to correct concerning behaviors like, you know, a tendency towards drug addiction, you have to get people out of the environment and build them up again from with like a, a real routine. And so, um, yeah, it was pretty incredible seeing the kids come back after a year and rejoin the classes. So I think it's awesome that you're doing. Well, you're that. saying my, the farm in Vermont might be too soft. We need to go to Bosnia. 
Do you want to hear the craziest thing? When one of the kids I knew was sent to Bosnia, that's when the war broke out and he had to be like blown out <laughs> uh, to, because it was just insanity. But yeah, you, I don't know what's going on there and I'm not asking questions, uh, but it's uh, it might be. Who knows? It all depends, I think, on what you're trying to accomplish. Just like how the initiation to get into the Navy SEALs is insanely hard, uh, it causes people to feel a true sense of belonging and accomplishment and earning the rite of passage. So it just needs to be consistent with what we're trying to accomplish at the end. That's what we do, right? That's our bit. Our business is a series of rites of passage all around the world. That's what we do. That's amazing. And, and, um, and I, I got to use some of your commentary, some of your language to help convince people because the common questions you hear from folks, are um, why would you do that? Why would you ever do anything hard? Why, like, why would I want any pain or any suffering? But, but you're mm -hmm. in your research with your book, you're saying like that's that's the core of who we are as human beings. So here's the the fact of the matter, right? When we do best as people, when we have something greater than ourselves to fight for, when the Blitzkrieg bombings of uh by germany in world war ii were taking place in london people feared that there'd be fighting in the shelters and that people would attack each other and it would just be all-out chaos but consistently when human beings are put in tough situations together they work together to figure it out it's our greatest skill i love it all right john for those people that are stuck on social media they have no time they're not going to read 256 pages Give us three tips on how to be better based on all your research. Uh, number one, our social ties define everything from our weight to our happiness. Uh, and so go out and find friendships with people who inspire you and who you admire. And the second is if you want to develop closer relationships, uh, don't just try to be nice to people. Instead, ask people for their advice, favors, Find ways for you to invest effort together, like a workout, a hike, whatever it is that you can do. And then the third is uh, that human beings are fundamentally uh, driven by novelty. So if you really want to attract people to engage with you, you're going to need to do something different that stands out. Now, that might be, in my case, I ran a crazy dinner. In Joe's case, he <laughs> runs crazy races all over the world. Uh, your thing might be a little bit simpler, uh, and that's fine. But just do something that makes you stand out. And what's the name of the book? You're Invited, The Art and Science of Cultivating Influence. And how did I get it? Oh, it's everywhere. So you can get it at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Books A Million. Uh, you can get an audio version like Audible or ebook like Kindle. It's all out there. I'm pumped. Thanks for, uh, thanks for letting me cook, cook you dinner. And thanks for <laughs> yeah, Thank you for not giving me food poisoning when you do. <laughs> and thanks for writing the book and thanks for coming on the podcast. You're awesome. Uh, this has been a treat. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Marion, you good? Thanks for listening to this episode of Spartan Up Podcast. Spartan Up is your partner in resilience for mind, body, and spirit. We're here three days every week. Tuesdays, you can find Joe DeSena, founder and CEO of Spartan, interviewing biohackers, business leaders, authors, and athletes. Thursdays and Saturdays, Catch episodes from our DECA, Endurance, Trail, Combat, and LaRuta series. Do you know someone who needs a little nudge? Maybe they could use some motivation, tactics to be stronger, healthier, happier, more successful. Tell them about our show. And if you're watching on YouTube, leave us a comment. We want to know who's watching and who's listening. Thanks. See you next time. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by AmazeFit. From May 18th to May 31st, Spartan Up listeners can head to U.S dot amazefit dot com slash pages slash spartan to save forty dollars on a bundle that includes the amazefit t-rex pro that's us dot amazefit dot com slash pages slash spartan